Hi, in today's episode we're going to talk about how to make this leather collar style necklace with LED lighting. Hi, welcome to another making episode of Gray Lightning, my video blog about making things and playing games. And this episode is about this leather necklace here that I made. It's kind of a steampunk design. It has gears as the motif that's engraved in the leather. It has LED lights, and I even decided to make the cell battery visible because it was steampunk, why not? So I'll talk about how the wiring is actually done on the inside. And then the final finishing is done on a, a sewing machine, and leather's kind of a tricky material to work with, so I'll give you some tips on that as well. Let's start with the illustrator drawing. This has four layers, and this layer is the cutout of the necklace itself. And you see these bumps here. The original version of this I based on a collar necklace I already owned that I knew would fit. And then I created a layer for the gears. Now I had created these motifs uh, earlier, and I just dragged and dropped them into the shape and sized them and arranged them in a pleasing fashion. And then once I was happy with that, I took the pen tool and used it to uh, take this outline and to expand it to encompass the gears where they were over the edge. For my laser, red is the cut line, blue is for engraving, black is for raster, and any other color you use doesn't show up on the laser. So I used green to create a template for the, the lights I'm going to be applying, and I have the holes cut out where the holes are on those actual lights. So I was able to lay them out on my design and anticipate where all the holes needed to be for the wires to go through. The final layer is a flipped version of the profile or outline to use to cut the back piece of leather. Because leather is floppy, there are several precautions that are good to take when you're going to be cutting on the laser. First, I used temporary adhesive to adhere it to some white cardboard to help hold it down. Then I used blue masking tape, not only to put the leather down, but to cover the vent in the back. See the circle? There's a vent in the back for removing fumes, and it tends to want to suck the leather in, so it's good to cover that up. The other issue about leather is that it's not uniformly thick throughout, so this makes the measurement of the material and the consistency of the material really important. Uh, you have to use your calipers to accurately measure the thickness of the leather, otherwise your engraving is going to cut through. So this is what the necklace looks like after it's engraved and cut. And while I was at it, I designed a little two inch wide bracelet to go with it. This is cut on a light color of suede and it, the design shows up really well on this type of leather. Here's some examples of things that didn't work. Here's leather that in this part uh, was too thin, so it cut all the way through instead of engraving. The second piece of leather is a little thicker, but it's still not thick enough. Uh, the leather that actually finally ended up working well for me is this piece here, and you can see it's quite thick even when it's not attached to cardboard. Now that the components are cut, it's time to do assembly. and I talked in an earlier video about how we like to use adhesive-backed copper tape for the circuits inside of our projects. And normally I use narrow tape, but for this project I used this 4-inch wide tape that allowed me to cut curves that matched the curve of the necklace and it would still lay flat. So that worked out really well for us. The LED lights we use, these are called LED sequins. This pack is white. I actually used a rose color in the necklace itself. We get these from Adafruit. Uh, that's where we buy a lot of our electronic components. And you can see the sequins come five to a pack on this little board here, and you just snap them off to use them. So my first step was to prepare each of the sequins by putting copper wires through the holes and soldering them on. And I'm actually going to use the wire as the way the sequins are held onto the necklace. Here's the soldering process. I have uh, two narrow arcs of copper for my circuits, one positive, one negative, and I just have to solder each of the wires to the correct location. Then I trim them short. 
And that's basically all that's happening with the lights on the inside. I also have to do this for the battery pack as well. One piece of advice I always give on lighting is to test at every step of the assembly process. So here I'm testing to make sure that all the lights are lighting properly. All that's left to do now is machine sewing the back on and some hand sewing of the connection at the back. So unlike with fabric that you can pin together, you can't use pins on leather because you'll put holes in it. So instead you need to use some kind of clip. I just use these binder clips that I have laying around and I put a lot of them on the edge to hold them together while I sew. I decided to use ultra suede instead of regular leather on the back because it felt nicer on my neck. And I hand sewed this necklace finding on to hold it together. But I made it big enough that I had an overlap that would have allowed me to put in a leather snap if I wanted to go that way after it was made. The other hand sewing I did is I heavily reinforced the battery location because I knew there was going to be a lot of wear and tear on that as you, uh, because that's actually my on off switch is just to put in and remove the battery. My final sewing tip is to make sure to buy a Teflon foot for your sewing machine because leather will stick to a metal foot and make it much more difficult to sew. So that's my leather steampunk necklace with LED lights. I have lots of other fun projects. I especially like to make things for people who like to play games. So if you're interested, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you.